Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly for pricing, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a 2020 retailed Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona 116519LN. In black ceramic and white gold, this timepiece is 40 millimeters in diameter. A relatively svelte 12.2 millimeters thick, 48 millimeters on the nose, lug to lug, and it has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Pop open the white gold clasp. This is an Oyster Flex strap bracelet. We're going to throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist and get a sense of the proportions and the size. As you can see, the watch is handsome, flat flush enough to wear underneath a dress cuff, and relatively short from lug to lug. I've seen Daytonas worn successfully on wrists as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. You can see from overhead, it's nowhere near the edge of my wrist, and you can see the same thing rolling down the barrel right there. Now the strap isn't really a strap. Rolex calls this a bracelet, and for good reason. Strip away the rubber cladding, and it is a titanium alloy band underneath. So you can't tear it, you can't cut it, and it has the structural integrity of a bracelet. It also has a lovely vulcanized rubber, matte finished black exterior, a little molded in striation that matches the flow of the end links and extends the lines down to the clasp, which features a straight through polish continuing that character line. You can see that there are bellows built into the underside of the Oyster Flex strap bracelet, and those are there to cinch it down and uh, ensure that it's snug to your wrist if you're between sizes. It also provides a little bit of air underneath for the wrist to breathe. Now, a combination of polish and satin, the clasp actually locks twice. You can see this little beak internally, and then there's a hook, and together, they latch shut once, and then the clamshell latches a second time. There's a little kerf underneath the Rolex crown, so you can dig your nail in, pop it open, and then internally, two ways to adjust this. You've got the five millimeter easy link snap-in, snap-out systems. So that's five millimeters in or out. If you look carefully, you can also see there are three divots with little tracks leading into the divots themselves, three of them. So you can use your strap tool to change the anchoring point of the bracelet inside the clasp. So those are your two ways of adjusting the strap bracelet system. There are also other sizes available. Should this one not suit you, we will find those for you. Taking a look at the case, it's all of high polish. It's graceful, handsome, a lot of fluid lines, tapered ends, all of high polish. It's not the super case you see on the GMT, the Sub, and the Sea Dwellers. Taking a look at the crown side, you can see there is a trip lock crown in gold. We know that because the center dot is the largest and there are three of them. Screw down crown, screw down chronograph pushers, 100 meters water resistant, ceramic bezel. The ceramic bezel is super hard. It prevents impact from reaching the case, it'll generally act as a heat shield along with the sapphire to prevent knocks and scuffs from actually hitting the gold. That's one of the advantages of the ceramic. It features little recesses that have small platinum deposits inboard, so that contrast, you can see the silver against the black, that is the platinum deposit inside the characters contrasting with the polished cerachrom black ceramic. The dial is black lacquer and the indices are white gold, but you can see they're also a little bit more as each one is set with a color and clarity matched, brilliant cut diamond. You have registers in board with metallic concentric track grooves. And then we have that emotional red Daytona script vaulted over constant seconds at six o'clock. The diamonds here are quite subtle. This is the way you could use diamonds on a men's watch and still stay low profile. Jewel encrusted Rolex watches are anything but. but with the combination of the gray gold case, uh, the black dial, the black bezel, this is not quite as overt as diamonds could be. So for the collector who's maybe diamond curious as opposed to a devotee, this is a great way to wear some gems without flaunting it too flamboyantly. Now it's also important to note that the timepiece does feature gray gold. I use that term. What does that mean? It means it's a white gold that is white all the way through. So if you scratch it, you dent it, or you scuff it, you don't need to replace the rhodium on top. Standard white gold needs to be rhodium plated. Rolex gray gold, like the best in the industry, does not need to be plated. And Rolex does make its dials and its cases, including operating its own foundry, so it creates that white gold alloy itself. Inside the case, Rolex manufactured caliber 4130. Bidirectional automatic winding, it has a winding rotor bearing for greater shock resistance, a 72 hour power reserve, stop seconds or hacking if you desire, pivots on 44 joules, beats weight at 8 beats per second, it's shock resistant courtesy of that rotor bearing instead of the old jeweled staff, and the use of a full balance bridge with a free sprung index. 
It also keeps outstanding time, and thanks to an overcoil hairspring that beats concentrically in any orientation with respect to gravity, the watch has received a COSC chronometer certificate. Rolex then takes the chronometer certified movement, puts it in the case, and tests the fully cased up watch, not in the chronometer five, but in six positions, and assures that from the factory, the watch will run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day. That is the basis for the term superlative chronometer. And remember, a COSC chronometer can deviate by minus four plus six seconds per day, so this is a higher standard. It does feature a neobium zirconium hairspring alloy that also makes this shock resistant and water resistant watch anti-magnetic, and it uses a vertical clutch and a column wheel for chronograph actuation, which means the column wheel allows for crisp actuation, a satisfying pusher feel, and the vertical clutch will store up the chronograph hand without any jump or stagger, and moreover, allow you to run the chronograph full-time without any wear, tear, or hazard to the mechanism. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Back with the white gold Daytona by night.